Just because distances on Earth can be measured in degrees, that doesn't mean it's a globe. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. Don't mention what he's wearing. Don't mention what he's wearing. Oh, look, it's Phuket Word. We haven't talked about him in years. Swanky whiteboard, by the way. Let's have a look at this curvature measurement challenge. Ah, the mystery of the whiteboard unfolds. I'm always up for a good challenge. So, what do you have in store for me today? Please subscribe. So here we're going to talk about measuring curvature. Hmm, airy muff. So we're talking about measuring curvature, eh? But wait, aren't you a flat earther? Or have you finally come to your senses and realised that lying to yourself is utterly pointless? And whether it is at all possible. So far, uh, believe it or not, uh, no one has ever measured any curvature on the surface of the Earth. Now, believe it or not, people have actually measured the curvature of the Earth. Shocking, right? There are even calculators to determine how much of a distant object is obscured by Earth's curvature. So it seems like the only flat thing here is your previous statement. Now, I made a promise not to call you stupid, but Phuket Word, you're not making it easy for me. Everything we assume about curvature on the Earth is done by uh, taking other uh, aspects of what we see going on in the sky and then converting that into this uh, curved surface which is I believe to be imaginary. Well 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 it looks like the world really does revolve around our imagination. Did you know that Greek philosophers were already measuring the earth's curve back in the 5th century BC? They had the classic two sticks method and just because you don't understand it or like it that doesn't mean the earth isn't a globe unless of course you've got some mind-blowing proof up your sleeve. It's not what you know it's what you can prove. And in reality what we have is a level surface. Oh, this is hilarious. Just to clarify, Mr. Word, are you claiming that the Earth is flat or level? You do know they're not the same thing, right? I mean, come on. Uh, but if you wanted to come along and argue with someone like myself who uh, looks at uh, what we experience in reality as being on a level Earth. Size, size. The Earth is massive, you know, just like you're a massive tool. Just because it doesn't look curved when you're standing on it, it doesn't mean it's flat. Scientific evidence and measurements have shown that the Earth is actually an oblate spheroid. Satellite imagery, global navigation, ringing any bells? Then what you have to do is come up with an actual tangible, repeatable measurement of the curvature on the surface of the Earth. There are actually several ways to measure the curvature of the Earth's surface. We can observe the shadow of a stick at two different locations, or measure angles of a triangle formed by three points. And these methods give us tangible and repeatable measurements. So honestly, I don't understand your confusion here. It's usually me that gets confused. So, what we have is this uh, distance between the UK, the port in UK, Portsmouth in UK, and in New York, which is 3,632 nautical miles. Uh, 3,632 what? Did he just say 3,632 nautical miles? He did, didn't he? Now, should I tell him why we have nautical miles, or shall I let him dig himself into an even deeper hole? Which turns out to be 60.5 degrees, okay? So you can refer to this distance as 3,632 nautical miles, or you could just say it's 60.5 degrees. A nautical mile is a little bit longer than a mile on land. It accounts for the shape of the Earth, which is slightly flattened at the poles. It's based on longitudes and latitudes, so good luck trying to make that work on your flat Earth theory. Brilliant move, pal. Absolutely brilliant. And people call me an idiot. And uh, it's the same. Uh, because uh, you may or not, may not know that uh, 60 nautical miles is equal to one degree. Ah, right, I see. So you think degrees of latitude are the same on a flat surface? Well, let me clarify. One degree or one minute of latitude is only possible on a globe. The Earth being an oblate spheroid is why it works so well. On a flat disk, the whole concept would have to be redefined. So your comparison doesn't hold up, my enthusiastic flat earth friend. And it's, and that's why 
nautical miles is used instead of miles or kilometers. The nautical mile was uh, come up with, was yeah, com uh, invented, I suppose, um, as a way to represent uh, distance uh, in terms of degrees. Using latitude and longitude coordinates is more practical for long distance travel where the Earth's curvature matters. Nautical charts rely on latitude and longitude, making it easier for mariners to navigate and measure distances. Even air and space travel use them. So sorry to burst your bubble, pal, but it seems like nautical miles are here to stay. So what we actually have here is if you take this 60 nautical miles per uh, one degree, uh, then you take that distance, 3,632 nautical miles, divide it by 60 because of this, then we actually get 60.5 degrees of curvature, okay? so Now, flat earthers are already a confusing bunch, but this guy, he's taking it to a whole new level. Everything he said so far relies on the Earth being an oblate spheroid, which we all know it is. So how exactly is this a debunking globe Earth video? Am I missing something here? Let me just preface this by talking about uh, a ruler. Well, okay then, let's talk about rulers, if you insist. Though I must admit, measuring the distance between Portsmouth and New York with a ruler sounds quite comical to me. But go ahead, knock yourself out, pal. All right, so you've got uh, a nice long ruler here, and we can even mark off uh, 60 on here. Let me just get rid of the pens, okay. 60 is there, where my finger is, and there's zero. So. Uh, we have this distance here of 60 units, and in this case, of course, it's centimetres. Well, technically, you could use a 60 centimetre ruler to represent 60 degrees on a flat surface, but here's the catch. The Earth isn't flat, it's an oblate spheroid, so it would only be an approximation anyway. But please feel free to carry on with your made-up measurements. If we do this and we curve it, and this line, this distance, becomes part of a circle, then uh, you know, the, the, the distance doesn't change, but then we can create an imaginary point uh, for this circle, and then we have a radius, and then that gives us this uh, ratio of 60 nautical miles per one degree. But the distance doesn't actually change, whether you consider it to be level or convex or even concave, yeah? The distance would not change, so. Oh, you're so wrong. If you take a curved ruler and measure the distance between two points, it would change. The length of the ruler would remain the same, but on a curved surface, the distance between those points is different. That's why we have nautical miles for marine navigation, and it's been working pretty well since the 1600s. So claiming all the maths is wrong is just baffling. And uh, we could also talk about, uh, for example, a thermometer. That's a good example because actually a thermometer uh, is a scale of one to zero, uh, zero to 100, sorry. Okay. Now then, I know that jumping to conclusions isn't ideal, but I just can't help it. The term degree can refer to two different concepts, temperature and angles. In the context of temperature, a degree is a unit of measurement for temperature. And in the context of geometry, a degree is a unit of measurement for angles. And degrees is used in both contexts, but it represents different things depending on whether it's being used to measure temperature or angles. And it would seem that Mr. Word here doesn't seem to understand that they are two very different things. But there's a lot he doesn't seem to understand, so... That feels redundant. So you've got these uh, 100 degrees uh, between freezing and boiling, all right, on a thermometer. Okay, that line can be as long as you like, but I suppose it just depends on the capillary action and the volume of the, of the, uh, the thermometer that you're using. But essentially, we're already talking in terms of degrees. Well, yes, they are indeed different. One measures angles, the other one measures temperatures. I hate repeating myself. Well, let's not confuse the poor old chap. So it just goes to show that you can, uh, you could represent this as part of a circle. I knew it, he thinks they mean the same thing. Can I say it now? I mean, he's just made a really, really dumb claim. Can I say it, please? You could say this is 100 degrees. 
Well, you could say it, but that wouldn't make it right. Just like saying the earth is flat doesn't make it true. No matter how many smart sounding words you use in your videos, your claims only reveal how ill-informed you are. Or maybe, just maybe, being a flat earther forces you to frantically try to make things work on your imaginary pizza world. Yeah, it's not a full circle, 360 degrees, um, but you could imagine it as being part of a circle, yeah? And you'd end up with a, with a segment like that to, to represent something that is in no way related to a circle, but it's just a way of projecting the information or that scale uh, of distance that we have on a thermometer between um, freezing and boiling. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure one of you will because I seem to have an awful lot of smart asses watching me, but none of that made any sense at all, did it? Comparing apples to oranges, pal, while they both share the word degrees, they're not even remotely the same. It's like saying a giraffe is the same as gold because they both have the letter G in them. Yeah, so that's, uh, that should help uh, clarify that just because we're using degrees when we're talking about distance across the Earth, it doesn't mean that the Earth is curved. It just means that we can take the distance that we've measured. Ah, right, now I see why you're desperately trying to compare unrelated things. You want your followers to say, aha, just because distances on Earth can be measured in degrees, that doesn't mean it's a globe. Well, newsflash, yes, it does. It doesn't mean that going from Portsmouth to New York and then continuing on will actually bring you back round to uh, Portsmouth. What it means is that you can just represent Portsmouth to New York as part of an imaginary circle. Mm, technically it would make sense, but I understand why you wouldn't want to admit it makes sense. Okay, so the, the calculations are easy enough to make, all right? And um, as we know, uh, the radius... Wait a second, did I hear you say as we know. Well, you're absolutely right. We do know the radius of the Earth. In fact, Eratosthenes, a Greek mathematician, calculated it using the angle of the sun's rays at two different locations. He determined the Earth's circumference, diameter, and its radius. So are you now going to explain how all this knowledge about the globe Earth somehow proves it's not a globe? Or will you keep tossing that word salad and hope nobody notices it? That is assumed to be from the surface of the Earth, of the globe Earth, to the centre of the globe Earth is 3,440 nautical miles. Now, of course, again, no one actually took a ruler and measured that distance, did they? Well, no, of course they didn't, because that would be really silly, wouldn't it? In fact, I'd go one step further and say that it would be as silly as a grown man trying to call every branch of science and astronomy ever wrong, even though anyone who carries out these experiments gets the same results. Again, it's just a representation of something that uh, isn't a circle at all, but you can just turn it into one. Wait a second, or maybe two or three, just wait. Let me get this right. You believe the Earth is flat and all the measurements are somehow manipulated to make it appear as if it's a globe. Is that what your claim is? So with the 3,440 degrees, you, uh, uh, nautical miles. And those measurements we have, you know, the ones that prove the Earth is a globe, are only possible because, wait for it, it is a globe. If we tried using flat earth measurements, every ship on the ocean would get lost. Or they'd be miles, at, shut up. As you know, you can, you can put this equation around any way you like, or you could, uh, you, you know, you, you might not have this number, but you can make the number uh, by, by just filling it in until you get the, the answer that you desire. So your approach is to make things up until you find an answer that suits your flat earth belief. I hate to break it to you, but that's not how maths works, pal. All right, so as you know, uh, if you're gonna do the circumference of a circle, then you just do two times uh, the radius. Okay, so plug in 3,440 uh, nautical miles, multiply that by pi, and that will give you the circumference a full circle that is equal to 360 degrees. And that turns out to be about 21,600 nautical miles. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up then. So there you have it, folks. 
the Earth is officially a globe, as demonstrated by Mr. Phuket Word. Thanks to everyone who hit the super thanks button on the last video. Zerg Jerk, Tom Robertson 3444, Hesifa, and Judy Lapon 3507. You're all awesome. Now, if you're feeling extra generous and want to support what I do here on YouTube, I've got a whole list of ways you can help. Your support really does mean the world to me. Pun fully intended. Love you, bye. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.